Hi, welcome to Edward Box Guitar Tuition. So, got another classic album inspection for you today. Michael Schenker Group, Assault Attack. Now, I'm not sure what date this came out, but I checked chart placings, and my guesstimate is it came out October the 18th, 1992. So, that's why we're doing this today. Um, so, uh, what's this album? What's the story of this album? So, basically, uh, obviously, Gary Barnes has been the singer on the first two MSG albums. Uh, the management, which involves Peter Mensch, feels they need to go for another singer, a different singer. Schenker wants, uh, no, he wants them to have David Coverdale, but Mark Schenker wants Graham Bonnet, um, which is the singer he goes with. I think Bonnet joins in February of uh, 82. Um, Paul Raymond and Cozy Powell depart, and Ted McKenna and Chris Glenn come in. Uh, so the, the group goes to a four piece. Um, prior to this, a few months before that, at the end of 81, they released a One Night at Buddha Khan album. Or was, did it come out early 82? It did, sorry. Um, so that kind of captured the Gary Barden era. Um, I think I said on my previous uh, MSG review of the second album, you know, the debts were so much on that. That's why I think the Buddha Khan album came out as a kind of special price. Um, and um, uh, it's a great record, One Night at Buddha Khan. Uh, captures that era really good. But obviously, Graham Bonnet is a better singer than Gary Barden. Um, he's got more technique, more range. Uh, and that was seen as the way to go. Obviously, what would happen was Graham Bonnet would just do one warm-up gig, get pissed, it would all go tits up, and Gary Barden would come back, and it would damage the performance of this album irrecoverably. And people would, the perception would be this album wasn't as good, but its reputation's grown over the years. For many people, it's the best MSG album. I'm still not sure. I think it's the best produced one. I think it's got the best singing. Um, uh, I'm not sure the song's quite as good, but it's a very good record, and that it deserves its classic status, and that's why I'm doing it. Obviously, I'm a huge Schenker fan. Um, so it made number 19 in the UK. It was five weeks on the charts, but the, the previous albums, Buddha Khan, made top 10, as had Miles Schenker, and the MSG second album made number 14. So there's a little backslide there. I think one of the things that affected it was the Buddha Khan album that came out early in the year. They changed lineup. Maybe by the time it came out, there's problems with the bonnet thing already. I can't remember quite uh, whether that happened before or after the album came out. Um, also, that year, people have splashed out on some seminal albums like Screaming for Vengeance and Number of the Beast, Blackout. So maybe this was just coming at a funny time of the year. You know, if it come out earlier in the year, maybe it performed differently. Made number nine in Japan, sold pretty well. Um, but uh, the Graham Bonnet era wasn't a B. But let's go through the tracks. So track one is written by Schenker and Bonnet. Most of the tracks are, but Ted McKenna and Chris Glenn co-write this. And it's Assault Attack, the title track. Um, so this is a great track. Um, I think what's interesting about this one is the riff's kind of pretty unique. It's unlike any riff on the previous two MSG albums. Um, uh, quite interesting vocal from Graham Bonnet uh, and he does that kind of high falsetto thing in the chorus love the breakdown in the middle and that beautiful wah wah subtle wah wah guitar line Michael Che plays very hard track for a singer to sing this and that's probably why um, it's not always performed live um, next track's Rock You To The Ground um, 5 minutes 48 so the kind of longer tracks on this album than MSG2 I'm just looking it's 39 minutes 52 this album so this has got like a really cool dirty riff, um, really slow groove. I think the other thing you notice about this, particularly on this track, is he's infinitely the best recorded, produced MSG album. Uh, Martin Birch does a great job on this record. It's got really punchy drums. The guitars are nice and clean. There's loads of clarity. Um, the bass sounds really good. Um, and he just, you know, he just records. There's not too much. There's not too little. It's one of his best jobs as a producer. It's recorded at a French castle called Le Chateau de Herville, or something like that. Um, but it, it's a really great sound. This track's a great sounding track. Um, uh, Michael does a really cool fade out solo on this as well. So he's, he's playing more mature on this. He's kind of doing more little harmony melodic lines. He's not kind of cutting loose as much. And I think, I think maybe at the time, maybe people wanted kind of more of those solos on the first two MSG arms, but it shows maturity it differs from those first two arms. Um, but the balance on the solos, the mix is better on the solos than on the previous two albums as well. Um, uh, Birch has nailed that. He's nailed the mix and the sound balance. Next track's Dance of the Single. So this is by far the most commercial MSG track up until this point. It's very poppy. Uh, but it works really well. Um, got a really poppy chorus. Quite an interesting riff. 
kind of using the D and uh, GB string type shapes. Uh, it was four minutes forty one. Uh, this the B side to this was a track called "The Good Girl from Uptown." Uh, that's a bonus track on this CD I've got, uh, and that's a really cool track as well. Actually, that could well. If they had more room on the vinyl, that would make the record, because it's only made the record 44 minutes. Um, it worked really well. Uh, it's a great track. It's got a great solo. I actually probably prefer it to Dancer, actually. Uh, and then it finishes with Samurai. Family is 16. So this, again, is um, kind of uh, got a really cool sort of mysterious verse, Bonnet's vocals. Uh, it's stretching out the sound more. Um, uh, might have a few keys on this. I think it does, yeah. It's Gakko Tommy Air does the keys on the album. Um, but it's kind of this, the keys are good on this because it feels like the keys don't have to be there. I think when Paul Raymond was in, it was kind of like, oh, we've got to have some keyboards. But it's just kind of more subtle on this. Again, showing good production judgment by Martin Birch. So a really good side one. Um, I think, you know, Assault Attack aside, I think, uh, you know, it's fair to say it doesn't have an armed and ready or, a, you know, Attack of the Mad Axe Man or a Lost Horizons on side one. But it's got a consistent sound. It's got an interesting sound. It sounds like a different MSG record, but it sounds like MSG. So side two opens a desert song. This might be the sort of album sand standout cut. This is five minutes fifty one. Really cool sort of riff using major and minor thirds. It kind of cycles and loops the riff. It's almost like it's in a funny timing, but it's not. Um, uh, good use of keys on this as well for Atmos. Um, uh, great guitar work on this. Um, Nice lyrics, actually, as well. Bonnet, um, I think Michael Schenker said, oh, just really got him to read some comics or something. He wasn't sure what to do with lyric, about the lyrics, Graham Bonnet. But um, I like the lyrics on this track. This is co-written by Chris Glenn. No, it's not. I'm talking crap. It's the next track, sorry. So the next track's Broken Promises. And you can hear the co-writing of Chris Glenn on this. He plays a great bass line. Love the rim guitars on this. It's got a lovely clank to it. Um, uh, it's one of the best tracks. Um, really cool. Uh, kind of breakdown for the bridge chorus. Michael's doing some like, really slinky riffing. Um, Graham Bonnet does great vocal. Brilliant guitar work. Um, yeah, he does a cool fade out. So some cool little keyboard line as well. It's very musical. So I really like this track. It's maybe one of the best produced tracks as well. It's maybe the track to listen to to sort of show, you know, if we're showing us some look how good this record sounds, this would be the track. Then you've got Searching for the Reason. This is probably the weakest track on the album, but it's okay. Um, three minutes 46. Um, you know, I'd maybe put Girl from Uptown on um, uh, instead of this, but um, got a nice melodic guitar line from Mal from Michael. And now I'm finished with Volsa. Um, and this is a cool instrumental. It's very different from Into the Arena or Captain Nemo. Um, a little more emphasis on the rhythm guitar and the kind of cool harmony line. Just written by Michael alone. Uh, quite an interesting track. Again, not you know, not as strong as in the arena, but a cool track. Um, so it's a really good record. I mean, is it the best MSG album? I really don't know. Uh, like I said, I think the, the other albums have got some better songs. What I like about this record is the uniqueness of it with Graham Bonnet's vocals. It's such a shame he didn't stay in the band. You know, uh, if this um if it hadn't, you know, gone tits up uh, before the Reading Festival and then they got out there and gigged and that might have encouraged people to buy the album more uh, and then they'd done the next album but I think one of the things with Graham Bonnet is a great singer he's not not a, he's not a bad frontman he's good but I think Gary Barnes is like a pretty cool frontman when you look at that old MSG footage and that is the classic sound of MSG is Gary Barnes I think if Graham Bonnet had stayed maybe this could have been a Bruce Dickinson moment and then built to destroy us better production and then Bonnet's the man but he's He's a funny guy, Graham Bonnet. You know, he looks like James Dean with his shades. He hasn't got a metal look. He doesn't like heavy metal, allegedly, really. But he ends up with all these shredders and guitarists, you know. But he's just got such a phenomenal voice. He's just like, he kind of just shouts on 10 and, you know, it's an amazing thing. Um, uh, and it's, it, you know, this is one of his best. I think his performance on this is better than Rainbow. Better than Alcatraz, maybe. Um, probably because, again, the, his vocals have been so well produced, so... So yeah, 40 years old, uh, I think today, um, really cool record, really well worth checking out, uh, and it continues Michael's classic run, you know, starting with Phenomenon, really, from UFO. Okay, see you again, thanks very much, bye.